and welcome to Top Hat and Veils. My name is Gilata Choju and today we're going to be talking about dancing at weddings, particularly first dances. I'm also going to touch on hen parties and learning routines for those. With me I have Danielle Allen, our very special guest today, who is a flamenco dancer based in London, but she also teaches flamenco. Hello Danielle, how Hello, are you? Hello I'm very well. Thank you for joining us today. Um, Traditionally, as a wedding planner, um, I believe that first dances started with balls and, and grand sort of dances where guest of honour would like take the place and, and lead the dancing. Um, but I've also done a bit of research and in about 1922 that kind of changed in the Western societies where groups of people would take to the floor first at a wedding and then the bride and groom Right. would join them. Uh -huh. But now we've seen a reverse cycle where obviously first dances are generally very important between mm. the bride and group. Now you've actually taught first dances, haven't you, in flamenco. Would you like to tell the audience a little bit about that? Yes, it's a delight because uh, certainly your couple is motivated. Yeah. And uh, ideally, I, the one couple for whom it worked particularly well, they contacted me actually three months before the wedding, which gave us a couple of weeks to get to know each other yeah. and know what they had in mind. That's very important to leave time to I mean, practice. It's like, and on the other hand, I've been called by a couple that had two days to go. Oh, really? <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, and and we reproduced something perfectly lovely for sure, them as well. Sure. But three months gives you an idea uh, to pick the music, particularly in my speciality area, flamenco. Uh, music is less uh, commonly known. Um, for most first dances, I'm sure the couple has a tune in mind you know they're playing our song yeah. so they the couple can come with a song already chosen a style it can be fast or slow it can be romantic it can sure. start romantic and end up wacky yeah it can be based on a choreography that they love from a film sure. uh, or a couple can come with absolutely no idea at all and claim they both have two left feet right the whole range is entirely lovely um, but a little bit of time gives the choreographer a time to get to know the couple, get to know their tastes. Um, now, what my father did when he remarried was I, he and his uh, lovely second wife wanted to uh, do something in Argentine tango style. Oh, fantastic. So as a wedding gift, I got them a DVD, Teach yeah. Yourself Argentine Tango. So they spent two months right. learning basic steps yeah. and then about uh, a couple of weeks before their wedding, they brought in a couple who were expert in Argentine tango just to give a few frills, yeah. a few poses, a, a few flourishes. Yeah. Exactly. That's quite a good tip for couples that want to maybe start off learning a dance or Ooh. improving upon a dance they already know themselves and then maybe have expert tuition Indeed. towards the end or something yes. like that. And the great thing about dance teachers is you instantly know the strengths and the weaknesses of the couple that you're working with Absolutely. and can sort of choreograph moves around that can't yes. you? Yes. And you can you know, you can offer them options and see yeah. how 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 they deal with it. Exactly. One well, how do and how they love it. You yeah, know, oh I love this bit, great, we keep that, oh I'm yeah. a bit awkward with that. No, we can find something else. Yeah. Indeed. And um, also nowadays the couples can film what's been learnt and practiced between sessions. Yeah. I mean the other couple that I, I worked with over a three month period uh, <clears throat> we had about six sessions, right. five is average, okay. five sessions of an hour and a half, two hours. But because flamenco is a bit more specialised, we were starting from absolute scratch, sure. we had a few extra sessions. And this couple was very lovely, you could tell they practised every day together. Right, in, in very Edinburgh. dedicated. Yeah, and my, and my, my dad as well, my dad and, and my stepmom were fab, they practised wow. every day. If you have enough room to have your arms apart right. and circle each other, you've probably got enough room to practice your yeah. wedding dance. Because that's a very important dance. factor as well. You've got to consider the venue where you're having your reception, Indeed. how big the dance floor is. And I know yes. there are some bride and grooms that don't want to have just their first dance on their own. They want to incorporate maybe the best man, some bridesmaids, whatever. Yes. So you've got to work that out as well, haven't yes. you? Is there enough room for everyone to do that dance, that routine together. And the two little things you want to double check is that you've got your music. Definitely, with my, a DJ or band or whatever. My darling know. dad and my stepmom, they, they came up, they, they, they'd been practicing in London, they came up to have their wedding in Dorset, but didn't bring their CD with no. them. So at the very last minute, on the night before their wedding, they were practicing their first dance to an entirely different piece wow. of music. <laughs> but because they'd been practicing so thoroughly during the previous two months, 
they actually pulled it off yeah. fantastically. That is wonderful. So yes, do do make sure you've got your you know your, your iPad <laughs> nicely charged for the day. Exactly. That the music will be loud enough or sure. not too loud. And as you say, check the floor. Also, uh, the bride might like to think about what shoes she's wearing. Definitely. On the very last session, if you're if you're working with a choreographer or a dance instructor, see if you can wear the dress that you're going to wear when you're okay. dancing your first dance. And I, sorry, no, no, no. I should mention that's very important if they are doing a flamenco dance, obviously, because um, as we see here, you very kindly bought <laughs> and you're wearing some exhibits of flamenco traditional dancing. Mm -hmm. This dress, I just want to hold it up to the camera. Was your actual wedding dress? Yes, it was, was made, made. It was made for me by my colleague Juana Jimenez, who's a professional mm. flamenco dancer, right. a seamstress. It was by my own design, and it's been recycled and used in shows since. Fantastic. So I quite like the idea that it's got life. Exactly, after it's been on camera as I, well now. <laughs> yes, and I could have chosen to wear a dress such as this that has a long train, and you can dance flamenco with these as well. Yeah. They just take a little bit of extra practice. Of course. And in flamenco, ladies can dance with their fans, gentlemen can dance with their hats, you can use shawls, uh, so they're good for it's good yeah, fun. We have a beautiful shawl here as well. Yes. So, I mean, if a bride and groom want to consider having um, a Spanish influenced wedding, a scene, yes. then these are all things that maybe you could advise them on. Indeed. Um, obviously, yeah. we've got the video blog going out on the blog later, the good. written blog. So, um, you know, they, people can contact you via us and you can yes. give them advice. Yes, I mean, I've, I've lent out items to right. various couples. I yeah. know the gentleman took a liking to one of the flamenco jackets I happened right. to have That's that we just it. used in rehearsal, but yeah. you rather fell for it yeah. so far. That was used. And just as day. an aside, totally off the subject of dancing, but it makes great photographic and oh, videography yes. material, yes, doesn't you it? Yes, you know, you can't, you, can't, you can't look wrong with it. Exactly. With it's kind of beautiful. <laughs> it's beautiful. So you were saying earlier that you recommend as a dance teacher probably about five weeks at least. Yes. Uh, you know, how many hours would that be? An hour a week? or um, at well, least? Yeah, I mean, with an instructor, if you really want something that's quite polished and choreographed, mm. then certainly within a two-month period, mm -hmm. five sessions with a dance teacher. Right. That's if you want a choreography that's sure. set. Obviously, if you just want a few little set steps yeah. and the rest are improvising, you won't need as yeah. many sessions. And most of the sessions are either an hour and a half, uh, and time's flexible, so do check with your instructor that they're available at the times that you that convenient to you. Sure. If you work nine to five, then obviously you want your sessions in the evenings yeah, or the weekends. weekends. Yeah. Otherwise, you know, I've taught people in the daytime, weekdays, yeah. but there's flexibility. And some couples choose to join a dance class as well, don't they? Rather than yes. have private tuition, they can go along to a dance class that specializes in the moves they want to right. learn, ballroom, Latin, whatever. Exactly, so. and you go, you go together to a dance class, you pick up some steps, you say, I like this one, I like this one, I like this one, let's just use these exactly. in our dance. So yes, you can have as much or as little instruction as yeah. you wish. With flamenco, obviously, you were talking about the music. Mm. Um, it's probably very important for you as a dance instructor to guide the couple as to the best flamenco music, I would say. Well, probably the best would be what they like best. Okay. Uh, but also, I might guide them towards the flamenco music that perhaps has the most obvious basic rhythm. Right. And also has bits where, okay, when she starts singing, that's when you do this step. So, um, yeah, so the best is, is actually the one that the, I think, the couple latch on to and say, sure. oh, yeah, we like this one. We sure, like, like the one. rhythm and the sound. Exactly. The and also. you can always, you know, edit it and make it a shorter piece of sure. music. Sure. Um, yeah. And then bring in the band or bring in another track for everyone to come up and yeah. dance in a less expert but just as enthusiastic yes, exactly. way. <laughs> joining in with the theme, it's wonderful. Exactly. I know that we were speaking off camera and you were saying that when you were filming, um, sort of training people to do flamenco, um, a lady then fell pregnant and she wasn't feeling yes. particularly well, so you used the footage. We used the footage of the, the rehearsal footage. Yeah. Uh, she and her husband had made sure that they filmed everything that they, they had about, uh, I mean, they were very dedicated, so they'd had already probably about eight sessions with me right. and they had a month to go. Uh, and they were filming every session so that they could practice from the from the video. But yes, she she found she was pregnant. She'd been pregnant for a while, and was feeling rather queasy and not very well. Right. And the doctors advised that she keep it very quiet, 
uh, up to her wedding day. Yeah. So yes, they, they, they broadcast the rehearsal footage to show their guests what they might have done. Yeah, that's great actually. And obviously, do you ever come across people, I should imagine you do, that are particularly nervous? Performing a dance routine. Yes, so. yes, yes. And so again, I, I, you know, from my years of experience, I can read their body language, and yeah. if they begin to do something that looks good, that seems to fit their personality and their shape well, right. I can say to them, "That looks great. You want to use that?" Yeah. So I do. I, I will make suggestions but I also look at what seems to come naturally yeah. from people and again you can do as much or as little the lady can stand beautifully and the man do all the twirls yeah, exactly. or vice versa that's wonderful yes. I kind of like the idea of filming people as they're rehearsing because as an instructor you can then go back and look at the footage with the couple yes and sort of pick out a bit like Strictly Come Dancing do they yes. sort of look at the, the good bits and the bad bits I mean, where it, there's the, room the, for improvement I mean some couples don't want to be filmed no, and of course I not. totally respect yeah. that I personally hate to feature in rehearsal because yeah. I think rehearsals are really important that you feel you can make as many mistakes as you like sure. so usually they will film me demonstrating okay. so that they don't become too self-conscious yeah, about how they look on screen but it's good to know that that offer is often there absolutely um, to dance schools and dance teachers oh so that's totally wonderful. yes um, I just want to touch upon as we spoke earlier in the introduction about hen nights yes obviously um, nowadays people are wanting to do their hen parties sort of weeks in advance of their wedding mm. and learning how to do a dance routine is one of those fun things that many women want to do yes. um, you've actually done that haven't you you've actually yes. organized hen party dance oh it's routines. a delight I, I love I love working with hens yeah <laughs> and um, we I, they can either request a short dance routine or what I also have offered is just um, a session where people uh, learn the fundamental style of flamenco so then you can improvise okay. and at the end of a, of a dance tuition session where we've all you know I, I'll bring extra frocks and I'll bring extra fans and hair Fantastic. flowers and we'll take lots of photos and um, we'll have a little f informal circle where people are clapping and yeah. shouting out encouragement and then uh, each person will take turns to do a little solo in the circle so just teaching the fundamental flamenco style so that whatever you do you will look right yeah you'll, you'll look flamenco spanish yes, yes that's wonderful i know also um i've worked with a dance teacher that choreographed some charleston moves for mm. hands and things like that and again like you they had you know the right outfits yes. um, the flapper dresses and things like that and the headbands yeah. so it's all part of the fun of dressing up feeling part of the mood yes. of the dance and things like that i mean at, at our wedding my husband and i danced a traditional spanish dance called sevillanas mm. that we'd begun learning when we went on holiday in spain right uh, but what happened on the day was we had our live guitarist and our colleagues playing castanets and clapping but our guitarist was running late and when he arrived he'd been running so late he was so nervous he played twice as fast oh, so as we had in the dance floor. <laughs> so i was shouting out instructions to my husband he was going what happens next which move do we do next i was going back pasada and three sevillanas and on the video it looks like i'm a real nag because <laughs> all i'm doing is shouting, shouting instructions but he was pleading with me his yeah. eyes were saying tell me danny what happens next yeah. it's a good point actually if you're having a live um you know band or yes. musicians playing your first dance music or even at your hand party yes. to make sure that they try and play it in time well um, I mean what what I've learned from that is that you tell the musician the tempo yeah and that can be agreed beforehand but exactly there's so many things that kind yes. of need to be just ironed out before yeah. the actual big day yeah. one learns from experience yeah of course <laughs> but it's fun and you coped and I'm sure oh, it's totally, stunning totally and my, yeah. my husband carried it off very well oh, that's, wonderful. that's <laughs> wonderful and I mean there's one last thing about flamenco that I do love in first dances is that it's a dance where no one person leads right. there's no leader there's no follower so I do see it as man and woman yeah, meeting like as equals. Like yes, that, yeah. which is you know nothing wrong with that no, no, at all. But, yeah. but it's a different style. It's a yeah. different outlook. It's a different uh, way of being. So I really I appreciate that in And a quality dance. Yes. 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 And the great thing is that the um, the guests can join in by clapping and you totally. know maybe even if there's props on the table fans or things yeah. like that oh absolutely can. and in oh. fact it, for one couple put on each table uh, a few little phrases that you can shout out in spanish oh, really? to encourage so there's idea. ole and bravo those yeah. are the easy ones yeah. and then there's they, they sort of before before their dance they had their best man teach the guests how to shout out those very typical 
cries of encouragement. Wow. Ole, eso e guapa. Yeah. And so when the couple did do their flamenco first dance, as you say, the audience clapped along yeah. and shouted out encouragement. That's wonderful. And yes. I suppose the same could be applied to the hens learning. Absolutely. Oh, without a doubt. Yeah. Yes, they each get a little strip and, and I coach them in how to say it. And <laughs> it just adds to the atmosphere. And it's very genuine. Yeah. You, know, you shout out encouragement and you shout out to celebrate the courage and the beauty of sure. the dancers yeah. and so it's a very it's a very um, interactive Definitely. aspect of flamenco very enthusiastic. oh yeah the hens dive in yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. Great. and i know again we were talking off camera um, sometimes you teach <coughs> hens and then maybe they'd learn their moves and dress up and use the props and whatever and then go off maybe to a spanish restaurant yes. and practice their moves or maybe it will be several hours of you just doing the routines with them and things like that so yes. there's different styles of hen parties totally. that dance teachers can there's absolute flexibility with. i've been to the spanish restaurants with the ladies right. and we've got nice up and they danced in situ or they've had as you say an afternoon party yeah. and they learn the moves and then they go off later on in That's the evening. I, one of my loveliest gigs was for an Indian family um, whose daughter had, uh, gone, uh, had uh, gone to study in Spain mm -hmm. and come back with a very great uh, taste for flamenco dance. Right. So here I was in a North London back garden under a marquee with a family full of ladies in beautiful saris oh, wow. and there we were dancing flamenco. Um, but there was a lovely, flamenco does have some Indian roots, the wrists and fingers very Bollywood, I should imagine. come from yeah. very ancient Indian dance. Yeah. So there were, there were links there. That's great. I believe you had a bit of a dance off as well. We did, we had the saris versus the, the spotty <laughs> Rocks. Very colourful, I should imagine. I won't say who won, but okay. it was a fair contest. Well, it doesn't matter. You all had fun, and that's amazing. Oh, we did. And oh, we did. From, from you know, the two-year-olds to the 92-year-olds. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, flamenco is for all ages, shapes, sizes, yeah. for men and women. I think the men forget that they too, you know, can dance yeah. flamenco in waistcoats. Exactly. And whatever the lady does with her fan, the man does with his hat. Beautiful. So, uh, so it's elegant and graceful. As well. <laughs> it's good fun. So, yeah, it's wonderful. So Danielle, thank you so much for joining us today. We hope that um, you've got a little uh, idea of what to think about if you're planning your first dance or hen party. And I guess maybe even stags can learn to dance on that. Absolutely. Can't they? I mean, you know, with the capes, yeah, they can. They can if they Why fancy not? a bit of a toriador. Absolutely. Exactly. The men, the men can have a have a session as well. Yeah, oh, yes. that's wonderful. So something for everyone. And um, as I said earlier, we've got a video blog, this is our video blog, and a written blog going out on Top Hat and Veils, so please refer to that. Thank you, Danielle, again. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.